Hey guys, and welcome to today's idiot video. Today's video comes from Flat Earther Air Dubay and it's titled Worldwide Lockdown Over the Common Cold. Now this video was chosen by viewers during one of my recent live streams. So before yelling at me for Air Dubay having this super boring voice that puts you to sleep while making you stupid at the same time, remember, this is y'all's fault. So let's begin. <laughs> So the entire world is on lockdown over a weak virus. So I see you're starting off stupid. Okay. Well, the novel coronavirus, otherwise known as SARS-CoV-2, is not a weak virus. A weak virus would be something more like the common cold. Now moving forward in this video, when I refer to the coronavirus, I'll be talking about the SARS-CoV-2, and if I refer to a coronavirus, then I'll be talking about the general family of viruses known as coronaviruses. The coronavirus that is affecting our population is a strong virus. The flu, which is also a strong virus, has an r naught value of about 1.3, while early indications show the coronavirus has an r naught value of about 2.3. However, a recent publication from the CDC suggests that that r naught value could be much higher. Plus, the mortality rate of the coronavirus is about 20 times greater than that of the seasonal flu. So yeah, SARS-CoV-2 is a strong virus, and Eric Dubé is an idiot. Weaker than, affected less people, and killed less people than the seasonal flu, or the common cold, or pneumonia. You're an idiot. And this statement shows exactly how little you know about the topic you're covering. Viruses never kill anything. According to Amash Adalja, an infectious disease physician at Johns Hopkins University Center for Health Security, the presence of the virus itself isn't going to be what kills you. An infectious disease always has a complex interaction with its host. For instance, HIV causes AIDS. It's the complex interaction between the human body and the HIV virus that causes the immune system to drop to a point where a simple bacterial infection can become a life-threatening danger. With COVID-19, the coronavirus enters through the eyes, nose, or throat and travels down the respiratory tract into the lungs. It's there where the virus begins replicating. The natural immune response then kicks into gear, eliminating those cells that are harboring the virus. Sometimes, the immune response can be too strong and lead to other problems like pneumonia, which can then become septic, and that's when you're in really big trouble. But now, the entire world is on lockdown. Military on the streets, talking about possible forced vaccinations. This is something you'll notice that Eric Dubé does often. His argument is so weak that he relies on sensationalist media and emotional pleading to pull at your heartstrings. This forced vaccinations that Eric Dubé is talking about it's a fake news story pushed by idiots like Eric Dubé to get a few more morons on their side. In fact, Donald Trump said specifically on May 15th that once a vaccine is approved, there will be enough for every American citizen to get it if they want it. Nothing about that statement seems like forced vaccinations to me. Talking about cashless society, not allowing money to exchange hands. A cashless society is inevitable. As our technology increases, the need to carry around destructible, losable legal tender is quickly fading away, being replaced by the convenience of having digital currency that is accessible anywhere in the world at virtually any time. And with their complete control of the media, government, and the minds of the people, look how easy it was for them to do this. Not only did they easily get away with stripping everyone in the world away of basic freedoms. Wait, what? What basic freedoms have been taken away? Sure, there's been some inconveniences put in place, but nobody's losing any of their inalienable human rights due to these inconveniences. And yes, these inconveniences are stopping the spread of the virus, thereby saving lives. You're an idiot. In the space of a few media-hyped weeks, they were able to whip everybody up into a frenzy to the point that they wanted their freedoms taken away. No one says they want their freedoms taken away. 
Now, people are willing to sacrifice some of their freedoms for safety and security. For instance, I'm sure people would love the freedom of getting out of their car at the airport and walking right onto the plane just as it's getting ready to take off. However, most people are okay with giving up that freedom for the safety and security that comes with the pre-boarding screening process. Ask them any other day of the week. Is the government your friend? Do you trust the media? No, no. But suddenly, coronavirus hype hits, and now, government and media are like the most trustworthy things ever. No, that's not it at all, you idiot. That might be the case if there weren't a multitude of independent and competing medical firms working around the clock to find out as much as they can about the coronavirus and its effects. Now, if it was solely the media or just a few government officials from a few major governments pushing this narrative, then you might have a case there. But as of June 12th, almost every country around the globe has reported a case of the COVID-19. You're an idiot. People are glued to the television believing everything, every statistic that comes out, every government advisory. This is such an overreaction. It's ridiculous. No. What's ridiculous is that you've convinced yourself that you know more than the entire scientific fields of medicine and virology, when in reality, you're so fucking stupid, you're a flat earth idiot. Acting like coronavirus and the deaths caused thereby are reason to close down the entire world economy and bring martial law and military on the streets. Acting like that's rational. Pretending like that's not the biggest overreaction in history. That might be the case if martial law had actually been activated because of the coronavirus. However, to this date, not a single law enforcement agency from federal to municipal has issued anything resembling martial law. And you said the government was the ones lying, trying to spread fear. No, Dubey. That dubious title goes to you. You're a fucking idiot. I mean, this is the biggest power play by the world government, the New World Order, in my lifetime. Imagine if they locked down the entire world and had martial law and military on the streets because of cardiovascular disease. Are you fucking kidding me? Cardiovascular diseases? Let's think about this one real hard, dipshit. How are viruses transmitted from person to person? And are cardiovascular diseases transmitted the same way? Hmm, no you fucking idiot, because you can't catch a cardiovascular disease just by coming into contact with someone else who has the same disease. Well, it's the number one killer. 17.6 million people die of cardiovascular disease every year. 40,000 have died of coronavirus. 40,000 versus 17 million. Why didn't we lock down the world over our biggest killer? Because imposing a lockdown for a cardiovascular disease is nonsensical, since cardiovascular diseases are passed on through genetics, not contact. You're an idiot. Coronavirus isn't even close. Cancer kills 9 million people every year compared to coronavirus's 40,000. Same fucking answer. Cancer is not contagious, you idiot. And therein is part of the hoax. People have called the CDC and asked about their COVID-19 testing and received word back that there is no standardized COVID-19 test and instead it is a standard respiratory illness test. And if you score low enough on the standard respiratory illness test, you're being counted as being coronavirus positive. I wonder how it feels to wake up in the morning and realize that you're the dumbest person around for a hundred miles in each direction. There are tests for COVID-19. I know because my son was tested when they first came out. Now the accuracy of those tests have been improved, but the CDC was able to test for the presence of the coronavirus and nasal swabs a few months into the pandemic. Second, there's no such thing as a standard respiratory illness test, so it's impossible for you to score high enough on it to be considered COVID-19. You just made that shit up. And it's not even a lie, really. As one German doctor's video has shown, coronaviruses are one of the most common respiratory 
illness viruses produced by people who have respiratory illness. So if you have a respiratory disease, there's a high probability that you will have coronavirus anyway. That's such a vague statement because respiratory illnesses can be brought on by coronaviruses because these viruses use the respiratory system to reproduce and spread. The immune system then attacks the infected cells and this can lead to other complications like pneumonia. So the statement you just read really should have been stated as such. If you have a respiratory illness, then there's a significant probability that this was brought on by a viral infection. You see, coronavirus is something that has existed for decades, existed and been known about for decades. You can see in old medical encyclopedias that coronavirus is listed as the common cold. I think what you mean to say is that the common cold is a coronavirus, not that the coronavirus is a common cold, because the bird flu, swine flu, and even the lesser known camel flu were all coronaviruses and none of them were the common cold. Eric Dubé, you're an idiot. Now for this next part of the video, I'm just going to let it play through and wait until the end to point out everything he gets wrong and the one glaring thing that he continuously misses. On this right here, <laughs> this is from the 80s and I'm going to show you in a minute, but let's get to it. Now, as you can see right here, take a look what they say right there. You see it? <laughs> it's 1989. This in, in, encyclopedia was published. There you go. It's the same thing. There you go. <laughs> it's no trick here. Now, now let's find the corona disease. As you can see, the coronavirus. Let's find it as on this chart right here. Because you know already, I told you already, they changed shit for the next generation. You see it? Take a look. This is a coronavirus right here. You see it? <laughs> you see it? What it say across from it? It says the common cold. You see that they say it's a new virus start from in China, somewhere in China, where they got seafood and livestock. Take a look at that right there, people. And I told you already, so-called Encyclopedia of Medicine. There you go. They're the one who give you everything that's in it. But pay attention to what they put down in it from 1989 about the coronavirus right there in plain sight. Can you see it? They tell you it's the common call right there. Just like I'd make my video the other day, I told you that it's no different between this right here and the so-called flu. Why is they pulling this on the masses right here with the coronavirus and your pandemic? You see how easy they got the masses? Go back and check, people. They always do it 100% in. And they basically change over shit for the new generation. That's how they do it. You better wake up. That's how they do it. Day by day, they find a way to change up shit. Even blame it on the Mandela effect. Take a look at this right here, people. <laughs> you can't make it up. Yes, there you go. The Encyclopedia of Medicine. Show you the same. Coronavirus is just a common call. And they got the whole world right in panic mode right now. Every country going to gonna so-called be a part of it that's what you need to know because it's one world government control the whole shit this is a plan to get the people in scare tactics scare mode there you go right there you see it oh man so much wrong here where should we start well let's start with the obvious at the top of the chart it clearly says that the left hand side of the chart is the family of viruses and the right hand side of the chart is an example of a virus from the family of viruses an example. Do you know what an example is? Well, you get five dings for not knowing what an example is. Now, the second thing I'd like to point out comes from him stating this. Right there, just like I'd make my video the other day, I told you that it's no different between this right here and the so-called flu. It clearly states, two lines above the common cold, that the influenza virus is not a coronavirus. It's an orthomyxovirus. They aren't even in the same family of viruses, you idiot! Now the following video comes from a chiropractor and contains some really, really bad information. So let's take a look. Okay, so let's talk about what's really going on. Now that uh, the coronavirus is actually affecting my family, 
by shutting schools down and shutting down schools across the nation, something just since the beginning hasn't seemed right with this coronavirus. And now looking at the recommendations on how to kill it, it's a weak ass virus. Like 80 degrees kills the virus. I'm like, I haven't really heard of, of a virus that weak. Just drinking hot water can kill it. No, it can't. And why do you look like you're infected with the nacho cheese Doritos virus? Let's first start off by saying that the properties you are talking about do not define whether or not the virus is strong or weak. And if the virus can't survive above 80 degrees, then how is it possible that the virus thrives inside of the 98.6 degree human body? You're an idiot. Drinking water without out ice, vitamin C can kill it, no problem. No, it can't, you idiot. If you're vitamin C deficient, then taking a vitamin C supplement will boost your immune system, and a boosted immune system will help your body fight off pathogens. However, vitamin C alone will not destroy any pathogens. Just being in the sun can kill it. Well, what do you know? You're wrong again. UV radiation can destroy viruses. However, the amount of radiation necessary would also do harm to your skin. So you can't just walk outside and get a little exposure to sunlight and cure yourself of the coronavirus. Uh, laundry detergent kills it. Uh, the second it hits your stomach, your stomach acid kills it. I'm not going to ding you for your laundry detergent claim because you're really only half wrong there. The American Chemistry Council has posted a list of detergents that can kill the coronavirus, but not all laundry detergents will kill the coronavirus. Now the next claim that stomach acid will kill the virus is patently false, as the CDC has confirmed the presence of the coronavirus in fecal matter, suggesting that the virus passed all the way through the digestive tract which included the stomach and all of its acids. Not that this guy would know, I'm sure his shit is filled up with undigested Cheetos. Fucking idiot. I'm like, wow, that is like the weakest virus that I've ever seen. Dude, you're a chiropractor. The only viruses you've ever seen are the ones you got on your computer when you were watching spine porn. And, and really the, the symptoms, it can only live on your hands five to ten minutes. Uh, on metal it lasts longer, but... Again, patently false information. The National Institute of Health conducted a study in which they showed that the virus can survive outside of a host for a few hours up to a few days on certain surfaces. You're an idiot. Uh, it doesn't cause a sneeze, and, and the survival rate is great among people who are healthy. Uh, only 15% of people have more symptoms. Only 5% of the people will need medical attention. Only 2% death rate in people with a uh, compromised immune system. So now you're treading into the dangerously stupid regions of bad information. According to a study conducted by the University of Washington, COVID-19 has a death rate of about 1.3%. Now this is much greater than the seasonal flu, which has a death rate of about 0.1%. So yeah, COVID-19 is far deadlier than the seasonal flu. And you, sir, are an idiot. And then I'm, and I remember my wife telling me, there's actually a patent on the coronavirus. And I'm like, nah. I'm like, that figures because the drug companies, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't put it past them. But then I looked a little further and there is a patent on it. It's patent US 2006257852, a US patent on the coronavirus. And it was applied for, and it's called severe acute respiratory syndrome, coronavirus. And that was applied for in 2006 by a company called Chiron. This part is actually true. The patent that he's talking about is a U.S. patent concerning coronaviruses and vaccines. And with just a cursory look at the patent, you would see that it clearly states that these patents are concerning the original SARS outbreak in 2003. In fact, these patents have no relevance to the current pandemic. You're an idiot. And now I'm not like into conspiracy stuff, but you know, when it starts affecting my family, I want to know what the hell's going on. Well, you would first have to demonstrate that this virus is capable of jumping from humans to Oompa Loompas. And so this company Chiron applied for it and was granted this patent on this virus, which was then 
bought by GlaxoSmithKline, one of the 10 largest pharmaceutical companies in the world who happens to specialize in vaccines. And so a vaccine usually takes two to two and a half years to get approved because they have to do safety testing and stuff like that. So now I'm looking into maybe there's a coronavirus vaccine. And sure as shit, there's a European patent on a coronavirus vaccine. European patent EP 317-2319B1. I've already read much of this patent, so I'm going to save you guys a lot of time. This patent is a patent for a vaccine for the original SARS-CoV from 2003. This guy's an idiot and obviously doesn't know how to read. Maybe that's why he's not a real doctor. Uh, just some food for thought. Do your own research. Yeah, do your own research. But don't be like this idiot. Actually take the time to read and understand the research that's being presented to you. That's how dangerous it is. But that's also how common it is. And since it's so weak, common, and not dangerous, it is found in many people with respiratory disease. So now, many people just dying of respiratory disease are being labeled coronavirus deaths. Eric Dubé, you're a fucking idiot. There is no default COVID-19 condition that a hospital or doctor must put down as a cause of death. This false information has been passed around social media and is 100% fake. When a person dies, a medical examiner or coroner typically determines cause of death. As I stated earlier, viruses don't actually kill people. It's a reaction between the virus and the host body that's usually responsible for the host dying. Now, if a coroner or medical examiner determines the cause of death to be pneumonia, but also finds sufficient evidence to believe that COVID-19 is what brought on the infection, then it will be counted as a COVID-19 death with a comorbid diagnosis of pneumonia. So why don't we have troops on the street for the 17.6 million people that die of cardiovascular disease every year? That's preventable. Asked and answered. You're an idiot. Why don't we have martial law over the 9 million cancer deaths every year? Wow! You're an idiot! 1.3 million die in road accidents. Are we gonna shut down the roads now? Are we gonna make cars and trucks illegal because of the 1.3 million people that die on the roads? Uh, no. But they do have stop signs, stop light, and seatbelt laws that are designed to reduce the amount of deaths due to car accidents, you idiot. Okay, so I think this is going to be where we end the video today. Eric Dubé goes on to read a bunch of stats of non-communicable diseases as if they're in the same class as transmissible diseases caused by viruses. Eric Dubé, you are a fucking idiot. All right guys, thanks for sticking around until the end of the video. If you found this video interesting, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below and subscribe if you haven't done so already. On a final note, I put a lot of reading into the studies that I mentioned in this video. So if you'd like to read those studies for yourself, there will be links to all of the studies in the description. A massive shout out to all of my channel members and patrons whose support helps me keep doing what I love to do. Calling out idiots on the internet. I'm Team Skeptic, and I'm out.